We've got four t-shirts, one design, four different print files, all made with Canva. Can you tell the difference? Should you be using Canva for your print-on-demand designs? Let's take a closer look. I've been wanting to make this video for a while now. For a long time, I've used Canva for various things for my business. So things like shop graphics, promotional materials, social media posts, and uh, some other things like that. But I've always generally stayed away from using Canva to make my actual print-on-demand designs. And that's largely because when I got started doing print-on-demand in 2020, I found several things online warning people to not use Canva for print-on-demand purposes. And that was for a few different reasons, but I, I would see things out there like uh, Canva's PNG files only export in 96 PPI or pixels per inch, and that's not dense enough. It's not good enough for print on demand. And I'd also see things out there about how Canva's licensing information on their free graphics was confusing and not to be trusted, that kind of a thing. And I didn't really spend a lot of time researching whether this information was accurate or whether it mattered for print on demand, because to be honest, I was already comfortable using Photoshop to make my designs and I didn't see a need to use Canva myself. But when I looked into it a little bit, I saw some merit in the things that I was hearing and seeing online. So I avoided using Canva to make my graphics. And I've even mentioned it before on this channel and on the podcast that I've avoided using Canva uh, to make my actual designs. But then a couple of months ago, I started seeing more things online come back around about Canva and print on demand. And this time I was seeing things actually encouraging people to use Canva for print on demand and some tips and different ways that people were creating their designs and exporting them in a different couple file types to get good results. And it made me start wondering again, it made me curious, what will it actually look like if I use Canva to make print on demand designs and you know, get a sample, like how will it actually come out? And so I decided that this would be a great topic for a video. I have four t-shirts, all of them from print provider Monster Digital from Printify. It's one design that I made using Canva's graphics and fonts, but I exported it in four different ways with different specifications for the print files to see how each one would come out. What we're gonna do to make this kind of fun is I'm gonna show you close-up footage of each of these four prints, but I'm not going to tell you the print file specifications for each one of them just yet. What I want you to do is watch the close-up footage for each of the prints, and then just try and pick out which one do you think looks the best and which one looks the worst. For now, I'm just going to label them A, B, C, and D. Take a look.
All right, did you decide which one you think looks the best and which one you think looks the worst? When I received these and I started really looking closely at them, I was surprised at how little of a difference I noticed in them at first. The more I looked closer and closer at them, I did start to notice a few small differences between a couple of them. But for the most part, if I was standing at a distance, you know, looking at a person wearing one of these, maybe five feet away or something, I really wouldn't be able to tell much difference between the way these came out. And if you didn't find it surprising yet, maybe you will once I tell you the print file specifications for each one of these. All right, T-shirt A was a print file made to the Printify recommended dimensions of the print area, and that's 4,500 by 5,100 pixels. And it was exported directly out of Canva as a transparent PNG file at 96 pixels per inch. T-shirt B is a print file exported from Canva as a print PDF, and that's 300 pixels per inch. However, it's a PDF file, so I brought that PDF file into Photoshop, deleted the white background, and then exported it as a transparent PNG. But I didn't alter the dimensions or anything like that of the file, I just deleted the white background. And the file dimensions of that one were the Amazon Merch Standard 4500 by 5400, and I scaled it down to be 13 inches wide in Printify's designer view. T-shirt C was a print file exported from Canva as a transparent PNG at 96 pixels per inch, but this one I made larger than the other print files. It's 4,800 pixels wide by 5,000 pixels tall. And so I scaled that one down to the same width, 13 inches wide in Printify's designer view as the PDF print file. So those two are exactly the same width in terms of how they were set or scaled down from their original size. T-shirt D was also a 96 pixel per inch print file exported directly out of Canva as a transparent PNG. However, this one was originally made at 3000 by 3400 pixels, so much smaller than the other files, and I scaled it up to be 17 inches wide on Printify's designer view. So I intentionally made that one larger even though I made the file smaller. All right, so let's just quickly address the Canva licensing concern because that was the secondary reason why I've avoided using Canva to create designs in the past, at least using Canva's free graphic elements that they include. I first took a look in Canva's help pages to find information about their licensing, and I found this specific page, which I will link to in the description. So under this heading, can I legally sell the designs I create on Canva there are a couple things that are applicable for us as print-on-demand sellers. First, there's this section here where it says, you can legally sell your design on printed merchandise like t-shirts, posters, stickers, tote bags, and the like. You can also design and sell certain digital products like eBooks and magazines or create designs for your clients. However, we also need to pay attention to the next statement on here. It is never okay to sell Canva content on a standalone basis. Basically, that's using a template design or an individual graphic on a print product by itself. Now, I actually reached out to Canva support to see if I could just get some extra reinforcement, some extra clarification on this. And I sent that request last month, and here was their response directly from Canva support. They said, when we refer to unaltered copies, we mean where the stock media is being used on its own, essentially being redistributed in its original form. So what I asked in my question was for further definition of what is an unaltered design or an unaltered copy of a graphic. And here they're just saying that basically it means exactly what it sounds like. You can't just take one of the graphics and put it on a product and redistribute it. But furthermore, they clarified there's no minimum percentage requirement as to how much you should add or alter for the design to be considered altered. We just have to keep in mind that the use of filters, changing of colors, resizing, or cropping does not mean we've altered the element. And when you combine that statement with the last sentence on here, using stock media in a design means there are other design elements present, such as other elements, photos, text, video, and or a background. So when you put those two things together, that to me is the best explanation I've seen so far about what you can and can't do with Canva's free graphic elements. Now I wanna talk about what I recommend and what I think I will use Canva for and how I think I will export files from Canva when I make designs using Canva. Uh, but before I do that, I wanna add a couple of caveats and they might be things that you're already wondering. So first of all, this graphic, I made it with some free elements that are available on Canva. 
it's this is not like a super detailed reproduction of a photograph or anything really really complex and so would there be a more noticeable difference between the print file that i made way too large like i made it too small and then i scaled it up compared to the 300 uh, pixel per inch graphic if i had tried to reprint like a photo like something of that type of quality probably however i did go with this type of a graphic because my goal was not to simply show the difference between different print file specifications i wanted to use a graphic that's realistic to the type of thing you might design for a print-on-demand t-shirt. Another caveat I wanna throw out there is obviously I only got this result from one print provider on Printify, Monster Digital, and they use Cornet uh, equipment, and I think they have Cornet Atlas as well as Cornet Avalanche DTG printing equipment. Will there be a difference if I did this same test with different print-on-demand platforms or different print providers even just within Printify? Maybe. I don't know. Nobody sponsored this video. I paid for these samples myself and it just wasn't really reasonable for me to order like dozens of different samples to try and account for that as well. So just keep that in mind. That's an extra caveat that I don't know that this would come out exactly the same with all the other print on demand platforms. But that leads me to what this test tells me about how I might use Canva compared to kind of what I thought about Canva before. In my opinion, I would definitely consider using Canva for print-on-demand designs based on these results. Now, would I ever intentionally make a file too small like this one and then scale it up to be you know, way bigger than the original file? Of course not. That one was more of a control to see what it would look like. That said, when you look at the other three next to each other, uh, I don't think there's that much of a visible difference between these three. So out of these three options, what I'm finding or what I'm recommending, I guess, is go ahead and use Canva. Just don't make a file that you know is too small and then try to scale it up or blow it up in the designer view. Either export the file as a print PDF and then use other software to delete the white background. Or if you wanna keep things a little bit easier and eliminate a step, go ahead and use the PNG file that, uh, that Canva can export for you and either use the, the recommended size and just leave it at that or make it a little bit too large and then scale it down, which will increase the estimated DPI of the print file. So that's that. The only other caveat I'd put out there is just that Canva does have a free and a pro, a paid account. And some of the features that I had to use are only in the pro account. So exporting a transparent PNG is part of the pro account. You would have to export a PNG with a solid background and then delete it if you have the free account. Canva also has uh, some additional features that you can only get with a pro account, like the background remover tool. That's kind of like the magic wand in Photoshop. So what I would say is this, if you're newer to print on demand, you're newer to making designs and you're not already comfortable with software like Photoshop or something like that, then Canva can be a great option for you. You might even end up paying for a pro account and just using it exclusively as your design tool because Canva has a lot of other uses. As I mentioned, I use Canva for a lot of other things already besides creating my designs. So at some point, the pro account might be worth it and then you just never have to go with one of those other softwares. However, Canva is limited. So if you already have skills in a program like Photoshop or if that's really the direction you wanna go, then I can't necessarily recommend that you should automatically be going for a Canva pro account because if you're comfortable using Photoshop, you don't have to use Canva. I was already comfortable using Photoshop and, and quite honestly, Photoshop and a lot of other uh, photo editing or graphic design software, it just has a lot more functionality and gives you more granular control over even text as well as your graphics as far as transforming them, adding layers, adding effects to them. Those kinds of things are possible really to much greater extent in photo editing software like Photoshop. But now I can confidently say I would not avoid using Canva because of the thought of potential issues with the quality of the print files. I think I've ruled that out with this test. And I also feel better about Canva's licensing information about their free graphic elements after reviewing their licensing on their website, as well as getting that response from Canva support. Now, if you're interested in learning more about how to use Canva to design graphics for print on demand, I recommend you check out another channel called Detour Shirts. Juna is a graphic designer who runs that channel. He's been doing it for a long time, a lot longer than me. He's a really good graphic designer. 
and he gives really good tips on creating designs for print on demand. Recently, he's been making some videos about how to do it using Canva, but he also uses Affinity Designer. So if you're interested in either of those, then I definitely recommend you check out Detour Shirts. So I hope you found this information helpful. This test was helpful to me because now I know I can use Canva. So if you did find this helpful, do me a favor, hit that like button, as well as subscribe to the POD Insights channel if you haven't already. If you are a subscriber and you're returning to watch this video, thank you so much. I appreciate all of your support. Thanks everybody. See you next time.